Okay, so I wanted to get you started on adding your impressions and building up your texture or patterns onto your tile um, so you can start filling in the different sections of your design. So a couple of sample tiles here. I think I've shown you the, these to you already. Um, you're going to take your design that you've drawn onto your tile and in each one of the little sections that you've created in your design you're going to create a different texture or pattern by either impressing objects into the clay or building random little shapes onto the clay. And as you do it in a logical, planned out manner, hopefully it will create a texture or a pattern. So when you choose a texture or a pattern for a certain area, whether it's impressed or built upon, you want to fill that entire section with it. Don't switch back and forth to different designs within the same area. Stick to one design. So this is the head of a flathead screwdriver, or a flathead screw that's been impressed into the clay. Probably would have been better if I could have made the flathead shape all in the same direction. This is um, a Phillips screw that was pressed in. Um, and then the others are little shapes that are pinched and molded and attached to the clay. So I want to give you a little demonstration on making impressions and then also how I want you to attach clay to clay. So here's another example. Same idea. That one has a stain on it, red iron oxide. This one has a clear glaze. So you get the idea that you can impress an area, build up an area, impress an area, build up an area, and so forth. I'm repeating it so that it creates a texture or a pattern. So. This is my tile that I showed you guys how to make yesterday, how to make the slab, how to cut it out. Should be eight inches by eight inches. Then I took a pencil, just lightly, and I basically sketched out my design onto the tile. So once I have my design sketched out, each of these little sections that I've created, that's a separate section, is gonna have a different texture or pattern in it. And I'm either gonna build on top of the clay or I'm gonna impress into the clay. So I have started working on this one in class today and this is how far I've gotten. Um, I'm building up little objects, little round balls of different sizes and I'm going to fill up this entire section that way to create the texture pattern for that particular section. Then I'll also do some areas where I impress. So I'm going to set this aside for a moment. And I'm going to use this spare piece of clay and I'm just going to go over a little bit with you on how to get started. So be looking around your house for different objects that you think would, be, would make nice impressions that would look really cool. So sometimes what I find is you can just find things as simple as a marker and if you press that into your clay it will go ahead and create an impression and if you repeat that impression doing it in rows or in a particular design, it will create a texture or a pattern. So you could use something like the back side of the marker. You could use the cap of the marker and you could press that in. It all just depends on what you like the looks of. Now I would suggest always trying out your impressions on a spare piece of clay first. And it can be a slab that you've just taken a chunk of clay out of your bag, you flipped it back and forth to expand it, and then you can just use it to impress into. You don't have to go to the problem of using the rolling pin and measuring it all out. This is just one I have left over from an example from yesterday. Um, you can do things like mechanical lead pencil holders. Um, that basically you can create patterns or designs. You could alternate so that it creates a slight different design. Um, whatever you want to do to fill up the space in your tile. Okay. Um, one thing I will tell you is if your clay is really, really moist and sticky, if you sprayed water on it, sponged it first, then you may find that whatever tool you use to make your impressions with is going to be sticky and it won't make, won't make as clean or as nice of impressions. Sometimes if you can let your clay out for an hour or so and let the air get to it and it dries and firms up some, then it'll receive the tool better and you'll get um, make better impressions that'll look nicer. Uh, you can use things like um, screws. You can lay the screws sideways if you're doing it on the edge of your tile, if that's where you want your design. 
um, and it'll pick up the threads of the screw, which looks quite nice. Uh, if it's not on the side, um, you may want to use it and impress just the head of it in, and it'll pick up, like I say, the little star shape from a Phillips head, okay? Um, whatever you can find that you think would make a nice impression. If you can find little stamps, like one year somebody got this little Adidas stamp or logo, maybe it was on their shoe, and you can basically impress that into the clay, and as long as you repeat it, you're creating a pattern or a texture. Um, so again, whatever you can find that you think will be a nice design for on your tile that will fill up each little section. Um, stamps are nice, pens, caps, jewelry, earrings, maybe seashells, maybe little pieces of rock or bark that have texture in them. Um, you just want to experiment, okay? And once you find it and you like it, then you can go ahead and incorporate it into your main tile. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is how to attach clay to clay. So when we attach clay to clay, we want to go ahead and do what's called cross hatching or scoring, and then we're going to paint slip on it and press it together. Now cross hatching or scoring is basically taking a sharp tip, it could be a pencil, it could be an unbent um, paper clip, it could be the point of a knife, or if you're doing a large area, you could use a fork. And basically what you'll do is make a series of lines going one direction and then cross over it and make a series of lines going the opposite direction. Cross hatch, cross over, kind of hence the name. Um, if you just do it with a pencil, same thing. Just etch a series of lines going one direction and then etch a series of lines crossing over it going the opposite direction. And what it does, it roughs up the weave of the clay and it helps to join the clay together so it will stick better. Um, so if I want to take a little ball of clay or two and I want to attach that to my tile, say I'm going to do a whole section of little balls or they could be football shape, they could be square, cubes, whatever you want to kind of work with on your project. If I want to go ahead and attach it to where I've cross-hatched here, then what I'm also going to do is cross-hatch the piece that I'm going to attach. And again, it's just roughing up the clay with the tip of something. Now, if you haven't made your slip yet, you're going to want to get your slip made. And I did a video on that, so you can look at that um, and follow the instructions there. But once you make your slip, and by the way, slip is just clay with water added to it. It breaks it down. Um, and then you mix it up so that it becomes quite creamy. We want it to be kind of the consistency of yogurt, okay? If it's too watery, you can add more clay to it. If it gets dried out and it starts to thicken up, you can add a little more water. Um, this is going to work like a glue. So anytime we attach clay to clay this year, unless I tell you differently, you're always going to cross-hatch both pieces of clay, paint slip on both of them, and press them together well. About the only time we won't cross-hatch and slip is when we're doing coil pots where we'll be blending or smearing the clay together. Um, if you don't use the slip, when this dries, what you're going to find is it looks like it's sticking, but as soon as it dries, and especially if it makes it into the kiln and we fire it, it will fall completely apart. So always make sure you're using um, plenty of slip and that you're cross-hatching. So I've cross-hatched both pieces. I'm going to go ahead and paint slip where I want to join it. I'm going to paint slip onto the piece that I'm joining and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press it down real well. I don't want to smash it because the clay is still soft and I don't want to change the shape of the little ball that I've made, but I want to go ahead and join it together well. Now we want to go ahead and clean up this extra slip from around here so that it looks nice and neat. When I grade your projects, I'm grading mainly on craftsmanship. How neat, how clean, how well made your project is. If I see lots of little crosshatch lines left here, um, from around your design and if I see slip that's like oozing out of there that's not going to impress me as much as if it's nice and neat and clean. So we want to go ahead and always try to make things super neat, super clean, show that we have good craftsmanship. Now one of the options you can do um, is if you can't get your finger to clean in some of the slip you can take a paintbrush, get a little water on the paintbrush and squeeze it out and you can use the brush to go in there 
and clean up that extra slip just to make it look nice and neat, okay? Um, learned that from the students a couple years back that were doing it. And just a, a wet paintbrush is great for getting into areas to smooth things out and to clean up the slip. So again, if I wanna go ahead and add another ball of clay, I'm gonna go ahead and cross hatch where I wanna join it. Cross hatch the little ball itself. Paint slip on both pieces. Okay, use plenty of slip just to make sure it's gonna stick and then go ahead and press it together real well. All right, and then again, clean up around it. You can use a brush if you have a spare brush or just try and get your finger in there and smear it um, so that it looks nice and neat. And then you would just continue. Um, if this is your shape and this, or the little shape you've decided and this is your area you need to fill up, you would just continue filling it up. So practice your impressions on a spare piece of clay before you put it on your tile. And then you can also practice cross hatching and slipping clay um, onto your tile as well. And then once you feel comfortable with it, go right into making your tile. So again, this is the one that I started today. So this section here, this entire section is going to be filled up with tiny little balls. So I'm just going to keep making little balls and as I do, I'm going to cross hatch and slip each one on here. It's time consuming, but the result that you get when you're finished with it is fantastic. So you want to be patient. You want to go ahead and um, choose your designs and the areas and the things you're doing wisely and then work to have super nice, neat, clean craftsmanship as you put your tile together and as you make your impressions. Okay. If you mess up on this area, you can always peel some off and redo it. But if you mess up on the impressions, there's not much you can do to redo it. Um, so really plan out your impressions well and take your time as you do it. Now when you finish it, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing. If you feel like your clay is getting a little bit dry, give it a spray or two of water just with the, with the spray bottle. And then you're going to go ahead and wrap your bag over it and tuck the bag under um, so that you put it away nice and neatly. Now if you're building up areas on top, you'll have to be a little bit careful as you wrap it up so that you don't smash your designs. We want it to stay looking nice and neat. But you'll go ahead and tuck the bag under so that it doesn't get any air and that way your project will stay nice and moist while we're working on it. Um, we don't want it to dry up on us. If you feel like it uh, is already very wet, then don't spray any water. Only add water if you feel like it needs it um, in order to stay moist. Okay, we will probably spend about a week to a week and a half on this assignment, working slowly, making our impressions, building up areas. Again, as I said, try to make sure you incorporate both. Don't have just all impressions. Don't have all built up areas. Have a mixture of both. That gives it a little bit more balance, a little bit more variety, makes it look a little more interesting. Okay, I think that's it for today. So I hope you enjoy doing this and I hope uh, you're working well on your tile. If you need to, watch through the other videos again um, and have a great time with it. We'll see you next time.